Welcome to this, our sixth in a series of six films, focusing on playful parenting in the pandemic. We've entitled this one, Minding the Minder. And while it's our final film, it's actually something that I think is of primary importance in us being able to hold in mind our own need for self-care in challenging times. One of the things that we might think of when we think about our own role and responsibilities in, by being a parent and, and in supporting our families is that often we can put ourselves to the back of the queue. And here I'm reminded of that idea and that instruction that we get when we go on a plane where we're asked to tend to our own oxygen mask first so that we might be able to and be in service of others following that. And I think that that can be a really good analogy of thinking about self-care in the current climate because often our own needs can be pushed to the back. This is particularly important in this current situation where I'm aware that lots of very challenging and troubling and uncomfortable feelings can be brought up and particularly ones that are associated with grief and loss. There are experiences that people are having right now that are profound in, in terms of their impact on, on not only ourselves as individuals, but on our families and on our communities. There are ex experiences of very real loss with respect to the death of people from coronavirus and COVID-19. And also the as associated losses with that, with respect to where our traditional experiences and capacity to be able to grieve the loss of others, to wait for those who have died and uh, those that, that are close to us, where all of that opportunity for grief has been curtailed. And for many others, loss comes in lots of different forms. And we might think of this experience as one in which we're experiencing multiple losses. People have lost their job. They've lost their opportunity to be able to generate an income for the family. There's been the experience of the loss of extended support, children's the opportunity to be able to be schooled outside of the home, going to their childminder, to the creche, to the, the primary and secondary schools. There's the personal sense of loss with respect to the role and the responsibility that you might hold while parent and the role of parent is a very important one. It's not your only identity in the world. So where jobs have been lost, you know, the opportunity to be able to have those coffee breaks and connections with your colleagues, the ability to be able to make use of resources, and particularly self-care resources, such as the gym, being able to get your hair done, being able to pick up that nice coffee on your way to be able to support yourself and to regulate. Mm -hmm. All of those things have been curtailed. There's been the loss of freedom of movement and freedom of choice. And that in and of itself can be a very difficult experience because it can provoke feelings of being hemmed in. There are the losses associated with, it, with connection, those opportunities to be able to physically get a hug from, from close ones and, and family members who might be cocooning or, or who, you know, for, by virtue of the fact that they're, 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 they live elsewhere, that you can't get to them, you can't spend that time with them. There can also be a sense, and I think it's, it's really important for us to hold in mind, that for some people, home isn't necessarily a safe place. And so the idea of having to spend extended periods of time at home, that might not be a safe experience for someone. So that sense of the loss of safety can be quite profound. Joanna, perhaps you might, in, and I suppose it might be timely to invite in at this point, creative opportunities for self-care in the home, in the context of loss, where there's an activation of all of these uncomfortable feelings that are associated with it. The fear, you can feel down, um, and that loss of normality has a, a very profound effect on people. And I'm thinking of ways that we can support ourselves and each other. And, to, and just to really, as I was listening to you, I was thinking really ways of staying grounded, mm -hmm. staying rooted and finding the positives within yeah. so much loss and so much uncertainty. Mm -hmm. And so immediately my mind goes to the, the notion of, you know, topping up our own love cup so yeah. that we can keep, you know, quenching those around mm -hmm. us. But at the same time, when we take that to what does that mean creatively, let's look at it in terms of a positivity jar. Mm -hmm. So this is just like a mason jar. You could use a jam jar. Anything you have around the house is fine. And I have filled it with 
notelets, little colored notelets. And what I do with this is all of those beautiful moments, and there are beautiful moments that are still ongoing around us. When things are lovely, when we have those lovely opportunities for shared joy, those true moments of connectivity and meeting with our children, with our spouse, something that happened funny on a video call with family members or friends, just note that down or note something of it as a memory. Fold up the piece of paper, put it in your jar and keep filling your jar. Put it somewhere you can see it. So even when things are getting anxiety provoking, when you are feeling that you're running quite low and getting close to empty, even at a glance you are reminded of all of the good, positive, fun things that are going on. And trust me, there will be enough to keep filling this up. And this is not a time sensitive project. Yes. This is something that you can keep doing over and over. And on those bad days, take off the lid, reach in and remind yourself, mm. bring yourself back, transport yourself to a previous positive time. And I think that's really, really effective. Yeah. I also think taking 15 minutes for yourself. And the last thing we wanted in making these videos was for you to watch and feel like, oh my goodness, here's yet another thing I have to fit into yes. my packed, overburdened day where I'm trying to be parent, employee, teacher, and do all of those things at once. So this should not feel like an extra. But if you are structuring some playtime for your children, that could be assigning them a jigsaw or an art project or opening up the back with a couple of basins of water and letting them you know, throw water at each other for a while. Instead of reaching for your phone and using that 15 minutes to scroll social media, which at the moment tends to amplify those feelings yes. of anxiety and stress in us, use that 15 minutes to stand still, to close your eyes, to take a breath and ground yourself, to look out a window and do that grounding exercise of find five things you can see, four things you can hear, three things you can smell, two things you could touch, one thing you could taste, five, four, three, two, one, going inward to your senses and grounding yourself or picking up on what you said, Janet, about, you know, the loss of the cup of coffee because yeah. I don't think that's nothing. Yeah. I think that's yeah. often for many busy parents, the only hot cup of coffee they might get in a day. So while your children are out there and occupied, use your 15 minutes to have a hot cup of tea or coffee mm -hmm. and just have that time for yourself. Also, using the connectivity, we've spoken about making sure our children stay connected with grandparents yes. and relatives and friends, virtual play dates and all of that. Do some of that for yourself. Mm -hmm. Call a friend. Link in with a group of friends after your children have gone to bed. Do something that keeps you connected with a non-parent focused activity. Yes. Yeah. That could be going for a walk once yeah. your co-parent is there if you have one to yeah. help you out with the children that you get out for your two kilometer walk. Doing, doing a yoga class online, doing whatever it might be. Everyone's doing activities online at the moment. Yes. So there's an array of choice, but taking a non-parental activity and yeah. making sure you prioritize that. Yeah. And my final word on the creativity in all of this would be just to give a nod to boredom. Yeah. I think boredom is one of the most underappreciated activities. And I think it's very important. Have. You know, I think it picks up on what you were saying around the social media piece. You know, that it, yeah. it, it kind of presupposes that everybody should automatically be able to juggle all of these things. And of course, we know that even within non extraordinary times, as such as we're experiencing now, it, it already is a very challenging time to be a parent, yeah. juggling and getting the kids to school and from there and oh, hither and thither. But, but the idea that anybody is you know a, a superman or some superwoman alike should be able to manage and and you know and, and balance i suppose the roles and responsibilities that you might that might ordinarily be taken up by a teacher yeah you know it's just not possible it's not and to give yourself a break and like good enough is good Absolutely. enough but i think that's why i really wanted to spotlight boredom exactly. as, as a self-care yeah. because you know there's a lot of messaging out there that use this time to learn a language or you know do yeah. all those recipes that you've been screen grabbing yeah. and never cooking and yeah. all of those yeah. things learn a new skill and if that works for you fantastic yeah. do that but don't take that on as something that you must do or that you are less than or failing because you're yes. not taking up a new activity. Yeah. Actually, there is a whole lot of something in doing nothing. Absolutely. Actually embracing boredom, downtime, and giving yourself a break from all of that frenetic paced doing, doing, doing is a really important way to recharge our own emotional batteries. Mm -hmm. And out of boredom, because I always think of boredom as that free floating state where creativity and desire can emerge. Mm. Having time to do nothing is a privilege. So if you have pockets where you go, gosh, I'm doing nothing, let's do something on the phone, 
No, say, oh, I have a pocket of nothing. Amazing. How brilliant. I'm going to do that. Absolutely nothing. And you'll be amazed at how, how powerful that is. Absolutely, because it is, uh, again, thinking about that experience of loss. You know, we might think of the mourning and the grief associated with that as being something that there is no timetable around that, that it takes as long as it takes, that it's very individual and unique. And the opportunity to be able to be and to not do sometimes can be a very useful thing. So thank you so much for joining us for this series. We've really enjoyed putting it together. Absolutely. And uh, we hope it's of value and of use. And thank you so much for joining us.